uh, found us again here at Five Minutes at the Frat House with Frat House Mike and Sidekick. And uh, I got to tell you, I think we covered just about every single sport uh, that there is possibly to cover uh, this evening, Sidekick. Uh, as we begin our, can you believe this one, 72nd consecutive week on the air. Uh, yeah, that's pretty, that's, I mean, mm -hmm. think about that, 77, 72, 72 weeks in a row. That's pretty yep. incredible. No, no highlight shows, no. Well, we've had a few. We've had a few. We've had many highlights, many, many highlights. Well, well by listen, I'm sure there'll be a couple coming out of this show before we're done. Absolutely. Uh, <laughs> but we're going to start it off. Uh, we're going to start it off with something we haven't talked about in, uh, I want to say, a long time, but it hasn't been. It's just been a handful of weeks, and that's NASCAR. <laughs> uh, and it seems like we just crowned uh, ourselves a new champion uh, just uh, a, a couple of weeks ago. Uh, wouldn't that be right? Yeah. Uh, you know, it occurred to me the other day, uh, auto racers get about as much time off as college students do during the Christmas break. I mean, seriously, because uh, just this past weekend, uh, they had preseason practices going on and testing going on down in Daytona, Florida, as uh, drivers unveiled uh, the their new designs, the new designs of the stock cars. Um, and incredibly, incredibly, it is hard to believe that we are just 37 days away now at this point from kicking off another NASCAR season on yep. February 24th at the Daytona 500. Uh, it, it's, <laughs> there you go. Whoa, baby. I'm going to tell you, it, it, it's got to be, it's got to be the longest season. I don't know, PGA really doesn't take much time off either, do they, though? Yeah. Uh, golf. And I don't really, think golf and does. if you think about it, really, you know, you have Homestead, Miami, right. the middle of November, right. and then you start up again in February, but the teams aren't really off really because not. you're getting ready for the next season. Well, look at all the, and we're going to see this in a moment. One of the things that uh, really impressed me, um, and I, I did check in on some of the pre, uh, you know, the, 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 the preseason testing that was going on down there last week. One of the things that really impressed me is the new design of the vehicles. Um, and, and I got to tell you, just watching some of the vehicles that were running around Daytona uh, last week, uh, it really got me hyped uh, for a new season that's coming up. Uh, what do you think of this? What do you think of this new design? I like the new cars. You know, it, it goes back kind of to the whole premise of NASCAR with being stock cars. You know, because it started out where they were taking regular cars off the road. Right. They were, yeah, you know, exactly. fix them up, you know, hopping the engines up a little bit, and they were racing them. Right. And, you know, then NASCAR got to a point where they let all the engineers in, and they weren't thinking about designs. Yeah, you had your Fusions and your Chevys and your Camrys, and they, but they really weren't right. like the stock cars that you, you know, that you and I bought on the street. Right. They were, you know, just very aerodynamic and just had a name on them. Mm -hmm. But now they've gone back where they're actually designed like the car that you go into the dealership and buy, and I like that. Yeah, and one of the things that I noticed, particularly at Daytona, because Daytona is 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 renowned for its its two and three car drafting going on, yep. is how they have eliminated, you know, virtually almost any spoiler off the rear side at all, which allowed for you know, it was almost impossible for some of these guys to hook up and do any of that kind of two-car tandem drafting going on right. at all. They were only able to do it for maybe about a half or, uh, half a lap and sometimes three-quarters of a lap. Now, I, for one, as a viewer, really don't like that kind of racing. I don't like it. Uh, I, to me, if the design is going to help in eliminating some of that, I'm all for it. I'm not a real big fan of it. It does, it can make it exciting at the end of races right yeah when you oh, get well, that yeah, one guy that gets a little you, squirrely and you know and then you have the big one and i you know come on we're all race you know we're race fans we tune into the race right part of it is watching the drivers race the other part of it's just waiting for that big one to happen yeah. i mean come yeah. on everybody's got a little bit of a oh did you see that yeah, yeah. You, you know i mean you you know you you get goosebumps sometimes when you see those accidents so you know I think they need to find a good mix. Yeah. So, and it'll be interesting well, to see as the season goes on about, as we start hitting some of these super speedway tracks, yeah. you know, as they feel out the new car, will they start doing more of this drafting or, or is it really the car set up so you can't, you know, it kind of limits the draft. That, that's not going to be possible, right? 
All right, well, listen, before you know it, 37 days away, that's it. Before you know it, we're going to have NASCAR and NHRA, which I actually think kicks up even before then. Uh, and not to mention, hey, well, yeah, sidekicks, uh, NASCAR fantasy picks will be coming yep. back. All right, won't be long now, won't be long. Going for three. Alrighty, let's go touch on another sport, and I'm going to talk directly to you out there, folks, because yep. I know I can't get sidekick involved in this. I'm going to talk a little NHL, all right? And he's he's ignoring me now. I know that. That's fine. He's got his fingers in his ears, but I'm hoping you're listening because we talked uh, a bit about it last week, and we laughed a lot uh, about the return of the NHL, about the return of NHL hockey uh, after a 119-day lockout. And so after a very short week of training camp, uh, actual regulation action will start up this Saturday under a shortened schedule. And how will that shortened schedule run? Well, it's going to be fast and furious, uh, folks. I wanted to say sidekick. I'm not going to do that. Uh, as teams will play a 48 games, they will play 48 games in 99 days. Now, uh, here are the, here's how the schedule is going to run. Aspects of the schedule have... The teams only playing within their conference, that is East versus East, West versus West. So we're never going to see an East-West matchup until, believe it or not, the Stanley Cup playoffs. Uh, teams will play each one of their inner division rivals five times. So, obviously, every game is going to count here in the point standings. Uh, they will play all other teams in their divisions of their conference three times. Now, the season will conclude on April 27th. Playoffs will begin on Tuesday, April 30th, and the Stanley Cup will be awarded near the end of June. So except, uh, expect a very, very fast-moving uh, number of days, 99 days, in the NHL, and we'll be bringing you results uh, in our regular show two weeks from now. We'll be bringing you, well, listen, let me take the we out of there. I'll be bringing you the standings and the results as we go through the NHL season. You can take the cotton out of your ears now. You done? I'm done. <laughs> hey, let's go talk about another sport we haven't talked about since, uh, what, June maybe? Uh, and that's the NBA. Uh, we are just about at the midpoint of the NBA season. So it's time for us to start taking a look at the uh, divisional standings. Um, and the Eastern Conference is looking quite a bit different this time this year than it did last year at this time under that uh, lockout shirt and season that uh, we went through then. Uh, let's take a look at the uh, Eastern Conference real quick over in the Atlantic Division. You've got the New York Knicks up at the top uh, with a 24 and 13 uh, record Central Division. The Indiana Pacers, who'd have thunk this, 24 and 16. They're playing quite well. Uh, they're seven and three in their last 10. Southeast Division, well, <laughs> You can never rule out the Miami Heat, 25 and 12. Yep. Over in the uh, Western uh, Conference, we've got the, uh, in the Northwest, you've got Oklahoma City. And in here, in the, when you get into the Western Conference, it's, believe it or not, every one of these teams are, uh, they're in exactly the same order as they were last year at the exactly this time. Oklahoma City Thunder are 31 and 8. That's a, that's a tremendous record. In fact, the best in the NBA. Uh, in the, in the, Pacific Division, we have an L.A. team, but it ain't the Lakers, uh-uh, nope. as they are crumbling apart right before our very eyes. It is the L.A. Clippers, who are 30 and 9, and in the Southwest, you've got the San Antonio Spurs, 30 and 11. It seems to me, and it's interesting, as I look this over, gosh, right now, it really looks like the strength is in the Western, in the Western Conference. That's mm -hmm. really what it looks like to me. And we'll be bringing you up-to-date standings on the NBA again in two weeks. Keep saying two weeks. Well, you got to wait for the announcement at the end of this show. Okay. Well, listen, I kind of felt we needed to touch on this kind of a bombshell uh, sort of story uh, that broke uh, yesterday. And, uh, you know, I don't know. Sidekick, I, I, you know, I made reference to it uh, pre-show. Perhaps maybe we want to kind of reserve a little bit of judgment on this one until more information does actually become available. Uh, but just when I thought that it was safe not to have to talk about Notre Dame uh, ever again, or at least for quite some time, uh, a very twisted and bizarre story broke yesterday surrounding Heisman Trophy runner-up Manti Teo, who gained a lot of media attention over the course of the season 
uh, and playing at the level he did, uh, after learning of the death of his grandmother and then 22-year-old Stanford uh, girlfriend, uh, who reportedly died of leukemia early on in uh, Notre Dame season. Deadspin, however, yesterday broke a story uh, that this alleged girlfriend uh, relationship, which apparently was online only uh, over Twitter and, and perhaps Facebook, um, and that the two had never actually met at all and dated back three years, back to 2009, was actually all a hoax. Uh, apparently, uh, Manti became, this is according to what the Notre Dame athletic director reported last night, and according to what Deadspin reported also as well, became aware of the deception that he had been being hoaxed over Twitter and Facebook and over other uh, uh, social media. Uh, he had became aware of it by about mid-December of this past year, uh, 2012. Uh, mind you, that was after the Heisman uh, announcement. Notre Dame apparently conducted their own private investigation, and the athletic director last evening held uh, a rather hurried and frenzied emergency press conference to quickly address uh, their activity in the matter and uh, how the university, uh, you know, what the university's assessment of Teow was. Uh, as bizarre as this story is, it leads uh, one to a lot of questions I kick. And the immediate questions that I had, questions regarding, uh, revolved around questions regarding things like the manipulation or potential manipulation uh, regarding the awarding of the Heisman Trophy. Uh, and then obviously the subsequent potential draft position uh, of, of, of a defensive standout like Manti Teo who at one point was ranked in the top five, could, could have possibly gone uh, you know, somewhere between number one and number five in the first round of the NFL draft. Now, in the most recent mock draft that I took a look at, following the BCS championship for Notre Dame lost, Mantel Teo's numbers had actually dropped to somewhere between 10 and 15. But nonetheless, that's, that's a pretty good draft position. Um, one has to wonder whether in fact Perhaps maybe there was some purposeful, and, I, and again, I'm reserving judgment, folks, purposeful manipulation here with this particular story in an effort to try to influence perhaps the Heisman Trophy Award or even just the positioning of Manti Teo in the draft. Um, as I said, we've kind of want to reserve judgment on it. I think there's more information to come. Manti Teo, Manti Teo is, is scheduled to actually address at some point or another address some of these allegations. We're not quite sure exactly how that's going to go, perhaps maybe in the next day or two. Um, what is your reaction to this bizarre one? Well, you know, the story came out, and I thought, okay, this is going to be just a short story. Yeah. You know, and it's just rolled. Um, and, you know, it. the story in the story, I think, for this is – goes back to what we've talked about many times about integrity in media and things like that. Yep. You know, everybody hears about Mante Tiao's girlfriend passing away on the same day as his grandmother and things like that. No one ever looked into, backed up these stories. We're, we've gotten in such a, a fast-paced society where everything, news has to be instant. Yes. We've done away with fact-checking yes. and we've you know, done stuff. You know, and it and it's been replaced with sensational headlines yep. and what's going to grab viewers and you know i mean this is breaking at the same news that lance armstrong yep. is admitting yep. that he doped and that he knows where all the bodies are buried mm -hmm. and that that it's going to come out that the international cycling union union and possibly usa cycling has been bribed to hide these failed drug tests mm -hmm. and that and this story is overshadowing that which is i think is a much bigger story um but uh, you know to go back back to the the you know the integrity you know pe media we need to stick to facts unless it's an op-ed kind of article and we we do our best you know we we poke thank some you. fun you know thank you you know but let's not judge people let's not you know 
let's hear the facts, report the facts. You know, Deadspin was putting on, you know, had actually had a quote that they interviewed a friend of Mante Teo. Yep. And that his friend was 80% sure yeah. that he was in what? participating yep. and trying to, you know, influence publicity in his favor. That's hearsay. Mm -hmm. You know, if you were in a court, that's hearsay. Mm -hmm. You know, and the whole crux of their article is based on this, and now everybody's taking this as gospel. They're running with it, and now all of a sudden you have all these stories of he was in, you know, he, you know, there was collusion for him to win the Heisman Trophy. It goes both ways, though, psychic. I mean, as you're pointing out, Deadspin's article is based upon hearsay, but however, at the same time, nobody was checking the facts on the on the front end as the stories were coming down to begin with. In other words, well, as correct. Manti Teo was releasing this kind of information, or as the information was becoming available to outlets like Sports Illustrated and CBS Sports, nobody yep. was doing the kind of background checking to find no, out. Exactly. No, exactly. So it goes both ways. I mean, it's no, not absolutely. just Deadspin. It's also on the front end as well. Yeah. Uh, I mean, in some respects, you've got to give Deadspin, well, I understand what you're saying, you got to give them a little bit of credit for, in fact, breaking the story. And Notre Dame, in fact, confirmed it by immediately having a press conference last evening. So, in right. fact, they gave validity to the fact that Deadspin was, well, maybe perhaps running with a little bit of hearsay information, as you point out. They're, in fact, they were, in fact, accurate in their reporting. Right. Who was not accurate in their reporting was CBS Sports and, and Sports Illustrated and uh, the South Bend Courier, who was running with these stories right out of the Notre Dame area. Right. So... I, I hear what you're saying. You're absolutely right. And I made that comment uh, with regard to uh, uh, media integrity. And, 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 and you know, I appreciate what you're saying because I want, I want it understood here that one of the things that Sidekick and I say, and look, we're running a little mom and pop, you know, sports right. talk, weekly sports talk program here. Yeah, we but don't have our things, own investigative unit. Uh, yeah, really. Yeah, we, uh, we have to go with. And if you think that this is a million dollar budget here, we'll just look around. But the bottom line is. The bottom line is, make no mistake how many times Psychic and I ourselves have had conversations where we say, well, wait a minute, wait a minute, I don't know if we really want to state it that way. I don't know if we want to actually put it out to our fan base stating this when we don't have all the facts. Right. And, and, and integrity is a big, big part. When you've got control of the, of the airwaves, as we know them today, mm -hmm. and they're really not airwaves, but when you've got control of that, that is major, major influence. Um, it seems to me somebody here knew they had control of some influence. Right. And I think we're going to probably find out over the course of the next number of days, perhaps maybe weeks, um, more obviously is going to come of this story. And, and, and we'll be bringing you future updates on it as they become available. Uh, there's still a lot of questions, uh, ultimately, that have to be answered. Um, but it's without a doubt one of the strangest stories. Oh I've no, heard. absolutely. I mean, I've yeah. Heard. I mean, the the whole i this whole idea we talked a little bit pre-show of this catfish. Oh yeah. Thing with these online relationships yep. and and things like that. It's you know, it's really you know, sometimes very uh, you know, deer in the headlight, you know. Pulling mm -hmm. you in yep. to some of these stories about, you know, how can this person be mm -hmm. in, involved in a serious relationship mm -hmm. with someone and have never, never met, met this person never for years? I and know. it's only been talking on the phone or through Facebook. Yeah. And then you come to find out that they're not, who, you know, like the, the, the show where you see these people yeah. and they meet each other and it's just out of the blue. You're totally taking, you know, yeah. they're, you know, where it's I not mean, even, you know, it's, a person it's the opposite sex like you know it you know a guy dating a girl come to find out it's actually a guy on the other right uh, exactly. or or vice versa or, you know well it's all this really all this you know cloaking and what have you that goes on uh, you know which is so easy to do uh, when you're behind a computer screen but the, the, uh, uh, the, the fact is we're gonna get to we're gonna we're ultimately we're gonna get I mean I suppose it's very possible that somebody like Matt Titale was, was completely duped. I suppose that is possible. We're talking about young people today who have been raised with this stuff, unlike you and I, uh, where perhaps maybe we're a little bit more guarded. Um, there's still, though, a lot of questions if you go back and take a look at that Dead Spin article. And I'm sure we'll be bringing you an update on this as we go.
Okay, let's go take a look at the NFL. Uh, and uh, second biggest weekend of the entire season coming up here in the NFL, and that's the AFC and the NFC championships. And yep. both games this week will be played on Sunday, uh, and they start off at 3 o'clock Eastern time with the NFC championship with the two highest seeds in the conference with the uh, San Francisco 49ers uh, going to Atlanta. And again, that'll be at 3 o'clock. Now, the 49ers are here uh, because they knocked uh, Aaron Rodgers and the uh, Green Bay Packers out of contention last weekend, 45 to 31. Uh, and was there one reason? Well, in my mind, absolutely. Uh, and his name is Colin Kaepernick. Uh, and so much for many of us who, are, who have been second guessing uh, that decision to go with a second stringer. Uh, but uh, what was the big difference? Well, it had to be his 181 yards rushing uh, and two touchdowns. 181 yards, he was the leading rusher. 181 yards from a quarterback. Uh, other than that though, Kaepernick's performance, in my opinion, was pretty pedestrian. 17 of 31, 263 yards, two touchdowns, one interception. Uh, but I pointed out yesterday on Fan Junkies Radio, uh, this really was an upside down offensive game with the 49ers racking up 323 yards on the ground and 263 yards in the air. Uh, in this kind of QB aerial driven league, when was the last time you saw that happen? Seriously. Um, but again, uh, remove those 181 ground uh, yards uh, that Kaepernick had, and uh, you know what you got? You got a Green Bay win, so uh, keep that in mind. Now, the Falcons beat the Seahawks 30-28 uh, in the final 30 seconds of the game with a 49-yard uh, field goal from Matt Bryant with just eight seconds remaining. Uh, this was a nail-biter, uh, particularly for me, as I, I, I couldn't believe this. Atlanta took a 20 to nothing lead into the locker room at halftime, only to have the Seahawks put 28 points on the board in the second half. Matt Ryan ended up uh, being a 24 of 35, 250 yards, uh, three touchdowns, but he did have two interceptions. But look at the performances around him through, uh, you know, Michael Turner, Jacquees uh, Rogers, Roddy White, Julio Jones, Tony Gonzalez. Now, I say all that, Nonetheless, and even with all those weapons, Atlanta is a four-point underdog at home. Can you explain this one? How no, is I that can't. possible? Uh, I can't. I mean, I, I even had to erase my Facebook post. You had to erase it? You know, Seahawks, Seahawks oh, yeah, scored yeah, that yeah, touchdown. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You and I'm you like, it's sure done. Yeah. Goodbye, Falcons. Yep. And nope. I had to go and delete that. <laughs> yep. Yep. So, but, you know. Which, but that does have, you know, come into play because you had the Falcons give up 28 points. In the they almost blew that game. Yes, they did. The defense. 28-27, um, 30 seconds left. You know, so, you know, you got San Francisco coming in. You know, we talked about it extensively last week about, mm -hmm. you know, uh, Kaepernick being the X factor mm -hmm. in this game. But, you know... We've been hard on the Falcons all season, mm -hmm. and that um, you know who have they beaten? They shut out the Giants. They've now beaten the hang, hung on to beat the Seahawks. I'm going to go with the Falcons. I think this is the Falcons' year. The only way that San Francisco wins this game is if the Atlanta Falcons defense doesn't pay attention to Kaepernick, and I don't think that's going to happen. If they can get behind the line, if their defense can get behind the offensive line of San Fran and disrupt him, flush him out, move him around in the backfield and sack him a few times, guess what? You're going to stop seeing him run. That's going to be the key to it. I otherwise think that Atlanta's got way too many weapons, and frankly, I'm taking Atlanta on this game as well. I don't understand the four-point underdog. I really don't get that one. I'm taking Atlanta. Both of us got Atlanta on that one. Of course, now we picked them to win a game, what's so lose. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go take a look at the AFC Championship. We've got the Baltimore Ravens, who are going to go to New England, uh, and that will be at 6.30 on Sunday. Uh, the Ravens were involved in a nail-biter of their own against the Denver Broncos. Uh, that went, uh, the game ended up uh, uh, being the fourth longest in uh, NFL history going to the 1 minute and 42 second mark of the second overtime 
uh, before Justin Tucker nailed a 47-yard field goal to win the game 38-35. Uh, Joe Flacco ended the weekend with the best QB rating of any quarterback playing all weekend long. Uh, he was 18 to 34 for 331 yards, three touchdowns, no interceptions. He had 116.2 QB rating. Uh, Baltimore defense, boy, they, they put it to Peyton Manning. They sacked them three times, they picked them twice, and they knocked them around for another five additional times. Over on the other side, the uh, Patriots dismantled the Houston Texans. Really not a surprise there, in my opinion, 41 to 28. Uh, Tom Terrific was uh, 25 of 40, 344 yards, three touchdowns, no interceptions, and 115 QB rating. So pretty close there uh, with, our, with our other one on the other side. The Pats are going to uh, have to operate for the remainder uh, of the playoffs uh, without Rob Gronkowski as he uh, rebroke his arm early in the first quarter. Uh, but I've been saying it all week. The Pats have got so many weapons, they can overcome that one. I mean, I know Gronkowski's a loss, but you know it's not like it's not like they don't have replacements to come in. Um, yeah, it's not like Tom Brady going down. Ex yeah, good point. You, you know, yeah. Tom Brady goes yeah. down. Then it's a then completely it different story. You're right. Oh no! Well, that's right. <laughs> yeah, you're right. And uh, you know, listen, Gronk being out, the fact they can replace him, that's reflected in this line. The Patriots are a nine-point favorite. That that opened up, I think, at nine and a half, so it really hasn't moved. They're a nine-point favorite. Um, you going with the upset on this one, Zachary? How'd you know? I just had a gut feeling, you know, just a little, little something, a little, little bird told me. That yeah. bird? Yep, yeah, that bird. I'm that making bird. this my bomb, diggity bomb pick. Um, you know, I think this is actually going to be a good game. They met once pre during the regular season. Mm -hmm. uh, the, Fal uh, the Ravens, sorry, were able to squeak out a field goal win. Mm -hmm. You know, last weekend we talked extensively about stats and, you know, and everything like that. For me, it comes down to, I'm going with the Ravens, it comes down to the untangibles and that. You know, we talk about momentum. They're hungry. You know, they find ways. Yes, the game against Denver wasn't pretty. It went in two overtimes. Right. But they, they just keep grinding and grinding and grinding to get the win. Um, I, I'm i going with the Ravens. I think it's going to be a close game. I don't think you're going to see this nine-point nine, nine point yeah, spread. Yeah, I agree. I don't think um, And, you know, the key for the Ravens is they're, they got to repeat what they did due to, due to Brady, what they did to Ma uh, Manning last week. Mm -hmm. they, need to, they need to get to him Put and hit him. Right. And then, you know, it'll be, it's going to be a long day for Tom Brady. There's no doubt about it that the uh, Ravens are going to be playing for Ray Lewis. Uh, we saw a little bit of that last week. Uh, and I believe that the Baltimore defense will come into play, and I think that you're right. I don't think a nine-point uh, nine spread is fair. Uh, I think it's going to be closer than that. But uh, too many weapons. Too many weapons, and I think Flacco, look, it's not Tom Brady. All right? Flacco makes, Flacco makes the cover of Sports Illustrated this week. That's a kiss of death right there. So uh, uh, I, I got to go with the Patriots on this particular game. Patriots. And that might be the difference. That might tie us up going into the uh, Super Bowl. Yep. you got a one-point game on That'll it. tie us up, and uh, from this point on, I'm sure we're not going to differ on much. <laughs> we may not. <laughs> Since we're talking football, let's jump over real quick and take a look at our Frat House Facebook post of the week, and it was the most viewed and commented post, uh, which was put up by uh, Sidekick uh, on just Wednesday, actually. Yep. Uh, when he indicated and, and made the announcement, he kind of beat me to the punch on it. Well, that, I, I, that's okay. I broke it for you because you were in the middle of the radio uh, show. I was doing a I bunch of stuff it. at that particular time yesterday. News came to me while I was on the air. I was a little bit devastated. Uh, that former Oregon Duck head coach, Chip Kelly has become or was announced as the new surprising head coach of the Philadelphia Eagles. And that post got the most comments. It got quite a few. Uh, and the most views. Okay, and those are great. That. Yeah, well, oh, gosh. I don't know. Do I want him back? Uh, anyhow. Um, no, I'm not going to get into all that. <laughs> <laughs> Great posts. Those are the kinds of things we like to see right now during uh, the NFL playoffs. <coughs> All righty. Uh, ch choked up over that Chip Kelly? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, there'll be plenty of time to talk about Chip Kelly as we go forward, trust me. And I'll have uh, much to say. 
Alrighty, let's run around and do our shout outs here real quick. And that's yep. Fan Junkies, where sports meets social networking. Get over there, sign up. Hockey season is starting. That's a big time for them over there. I know they're going to have their chat rooms yeah. open oh, yeah. uh, as the hockey season kicks up on Saturday. It's free, completely free to join. It doesn't take but three minutes to sign up. So get over to fanjunkies.net. Fan Junkies Radio is just in going incredibly. Uh, we've got more guests lined up. we got one tomorrow. And Fred House Sports is airing over there every Saturday afternoon over on Blog Talk Radio on Fan Junkies Radio. Uh, we'll be broadcasting every Saturday afternoon on uh, at 3 o'clock, 3 o'clock Eastern Time. Yep. We rebroadcast the show. It's getting great hits over there, too. And that's way. an interactive experience. It is, because I hang on and I'll, I'll, I, you know, I'll take phone calls from anybody that listens to the rebroadcast of the show. Uh, Herb FM Sports down in Baltimore, Maryland area. Uh, check them out. Uh, I am told we will be broadcasting now regularly every Friday night, I believe, at 8 o'clock. But check their hey, schedule. That's great news. HerbFM.com. Get over there. Check that out. And I was told by, by buddy Chris Seidel that we will be regular at on Friday. Frat House Sports, I'm working on right now no less than about four articles that I'm juggling all at once. Yep. It's been a crazy, crazy week. Working on no less than about four articles, so we're going to have some new content up on yep. there as well. And and we're going to we'll tease it again. We're still trying to work out the details. Yeah. But you may see something from Sidekick. There you go. Popping up on the sports page. Sidekick's going to have some contributions. So you're some. gonna real personal stuff too. You want to check it out. Now, next week, if you noticed, I've been talking two weeks from now, two weeks from now, next week. Here's what we're going to do. You might recall way back about 22 weeks ago, I think it was episode number 50, we did a preseason football roundtable. It was right out on the back deck here at the uh, Fred House. Yep. And we talked nothing but football, NFL football. We had a panel here. We had about four people. And we, all, we, we just talked preseason football. We're going to do the same thing next week because we're going to be in between the championships and the Super Bowl. There will be no NFL action next week. So we thought what we would do, we're going to reconvene a panel. We're going to put them right here in the room. We're going to talk NFL uh, topics. That's going to be it. The whole show will be NFL. And we're going to do yep. it in a very different sort of way. So you're going to want to make sure that you are here for that one. We're going to right? ring the bell and take the gloves off. You got it. You got it. That, that, that was a great show, number 50. If you haven't seen it, go check it out. Um, all right, in the meantime, you know what you got to do. You got to keep us real, you got to keep us live, and you got to keep us going. Be here for that round table next week. See you then. Yeah.